Hi, welcome to Unity Through Community. I'm Mary O'Brien, Director of Community Education for the Hastings Public Schools. And uh, it is winter, it is cold. You know, I always start with some sort of comment about the weather because I'm one of those people that is really impacted by the weather. Um, so yes, but you know, you kind of got to like it that it really gets cold here and that there's snow, um, that we have an actual winter, you know, those change of seasons. It's pretty wonderful here in Minnesota. So right now, um, people are saying, what can I do that I'm, before I get cabin fever, before it sets in too deeply? And so hopefully right after the holidays, you received in your mailbox this lovely new catalog. This is one of our primary ways of communicating with you is through our catalog. And what it provides is all the different learning classes, activities, opportunities, that Hastings Community Ed has for you, our community members. So um, you probably did get this. I hope that on one of these cold nights you said, oh, I have nothing to do and there's only reruns on TV. What should I do? Oh, I'll look through the catalog. And as you were paging through the catalog, I'm sure you saw all sorts of really amazingly fun things that <laughs> that you would want to be doing for yourself or your family or with a neighbor or um, for your kids this winter. So um, one of the things I, I want to draw a couple things to your attention. Um, one is the fitness and um, health and wellness classes that we have. Now it's pretty typical start of the year people say I'm going to get fit and what we know about resolutions is that they kind of get flushed down the toilet pretty fast. Um, and we want to make it easy for you to keep your resolution if in fact that was something you wanted to do was um, get back into shape. We have a number of different classes, but here's one of the best things. Um, starting the week of um, January 19th, we have that week a whole series of try it, free try it classes. Um, and I know that myself, looking at getting a gym membership when I'm not sure if I'm really going to use it or um, signing up for a series of classes that I've never done this and so how will I know I like it? This is the answer. You can try it once for free. So if you look in our catalog and it's on some of the beginning pages, uh, you will see all the different kinds of classes that we have that you can take for free. You have to sign up for them online at www.hastingscommunityed.com or you can um, call 651-480-7670. But we have classes if you are um, high energy and you're looking for a class like that. For example, we have Turbo Kick. Um, Personally, I wouldn't be in a turbo kick class because I've sort of moved past it in my life. But according to this, you can burn up to a thousand calories an hour. And when I say that, I think maybe I should rethink my <laughs> decision not to do that class. My orientation is a little more toward the gentle yoga. So um, it's a vinyasa style, it's a flow yoga class. Actually, that's a class that I take and I enjoy so much. The instructor is wonderful. And one of the things that I love about all of our instructors is, okay, so you come in and you don't know downward dog from um, a sunset. And she's not going to tell you just to do downward dog. She's going to give you a, an orientation and she'll, she'll walk you through it. She comes out and if you have questions, she will help you get into the position. She gives you lots of variations. So if um, downward dog doesn't work for you and downward dog is like if you've seen your dog, they put the paws down and then the butt goes up, okay? So you might say to yourself, my butt's not going anywhere. She'll give you some, some ways to gradually get there. And um, the amazing thing about, about any fitness class, I think, is that uh, the first couple times you might go, oh my gosh, I'm sore, I don't like this. And then all of a sudden one day a little ding ding goes off in your head and you say, oh, I'm so glad I get to go to yoga today. So um, we have our health and wellness classes coming up, a whole week of free triad classes the week of January 19th. So I want to encourage you to sign, sign up for that. Another thing sometimes in terms of resolutions is we say, you know, I'm going to take care of my financial situation. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a budget. I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to put away money for retirement. We have a whole wonderful section of financial classes for you. Everything from preparing your estate uh, plan, 
choosing your investments. Here's one that um, I know a lot of people, especially 50 plus and better, are interested in is keeping the cabin business or um, farm in the family. So if you have a family cabin and uh, in your, within your family system, you're starting to talk about, okay, you know, maybe mom and dad or grandma and grandpa are looking at how do they make sure that that stays in the family. Here's a great class for you. We have all sorts of things about um, uh, if you're trying to uh, get your kids ready to go to college, how do you save money, how do you work on that, social security planning. I mean, so all those things that in the back of your head at that come forward at the beginning of the year and we say, oh, I should know a little bit more about that. We have classes for you. So we're really excited about um, offering you these various opportunities. And then we have things for kids too. So um, we know that uh, lots of kids are interested in playing with Legos and putting things together. And actually those are wonderful ways to learn about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So we have a number of, we call them STEM, STEM enrichment classes coming up. Uh, they're offered right after school. So your kids go to school all day and then at the end of the day they can go right into their um, enrichment class. We do have some financial assistance available through our Invest in a Youth Scholarship Program. So um, please give us a call. We have just tons of things. If you got your catalog and then you accidentally put it in your recycling, because I know sometimes that happens, Give us a call, 651-480-7670. We can get another catalog to you. Also, they're at a variety of places around town. Um, I know they're at Perkins, they're at the library. So, you know, you can pick one up and um, take a look at it there. So you probably got this catalog. If you have young children, um, preschoolers in your household, you got this one before the holidays, our Early Childhood Family Ed catalog. We have our second session of ECFE, Early Childhood Family Education classes, starting um, at the end of the month. And so actually today, we're taping on Friday, February 9th, is our deadline for registration to get into the um, random draw. But after that, there may be some openings in our classes. We have some information in here about what our preschool classes next year are going to look like. It's never too early to think about preschool next year for your child, so you want to take a look at those. Um, <coughs> we also have parent-child evening at classes. We know a lot of families are working families. I just saw a study that said the state of Minnesota is among the highest um, number of women working outside the home. Um, and I remember a long time ago, not that long ago, I saw a statistic that says 73% of mothers with preschoolers are working outside the home. So we recognize that and we want to make sure that we have uh, time for you to come with your children in the evening. So we have a number of classes um, around that right here in our catalog. Um, the uh, Nurture Play, our, our, um, the Evening Preschool Explorations is a great class. Evening Parent and Toddler Activity Nights and Family Activity Nights are great classes. I love the uh, Toddler Activity Night, Parent Toddler Activity Night, because you know the toddlers, you want <clears throat> to burn off a little steam. So it's great. You, bring, you have dinner, you bring them to class, take them home, they go to bed. Not too much worse than that. Um, sp spoken as a grandmother. We also have these amazing... Um, field trips and we have a number of them coming up this winter for a three to five year olds you go with your parent uh, chi parent child or parent grandparent um, that's something that we do in our family my uh, husband and I love to take our grandchildren on different activities so that's something that uh, you could do and also we have a great um, field trip going to Children's Theater Company to see Peter Pan and I've long said I think that's the easiest way to go to Children's Theater Company is to go on the bus they drive you there they drop you off you go in you sit down you come out the bus is there it brings you home you don't have to worry about parking it's terrific so um, our early childhood catalog also came if you didn't receive it or if you need a new copy, 651-480-7670. And we have a big transition happening in our early childhood program. Our um, current coordinator, uh, Michelle Thompson, Missy, is retiring after 30 years of just 
absolutely exemplary service um, here in Hastings. These programs look like this because of Missy um, and her dedication and her passion and her commitment to um, families with young children in our community. And we are so fortunate that we have someone who also has dedication and passion around early childhood issues who's um, going to be our new coordinator. And it's Angie McGinnis. Hi, Angie. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm Appreciate so excited. <laughs> excited. I'm so excited. Everybody is just <coughs> thrilled. I've heard so many people say um, that they're so delighted that, that you're going to be part of our community education team. So welcome. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm very excited. Um, I know I have big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. um, Missy did such a great job. I remember when my kids um, went through ECFE and she's just a delightful person to work with. And mm -hmm. so I know I have mm -hmm. big shoes to fill, So, mm -hmm. but I'm looking forward to joining mm -hmm. your team. Oh, good. Well, you know, we, uh, uh, you know that when somebody, you know, I filled big shoes too coming in and um, there's a lot of really good stuff about that because um, as Don had done when I came in to be community ed director and as Missy has done, um, that program is just you know, the infrastructure is rock yeah, solid. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's it only gives you an opportunity to say, how are we gonna sure. make this grow? So, sure. well, yeah. tell me a little bit about your background. So you mentioned you have kids. Yes, we have kids. Um, I'm married to, my husband, Pete, is in the school district. Um, we have two kids in the school district. Gracie is a sixth grader and Thomas is a third grader. Um, I've been involved in education in Hastings since I moved here 17 years ago. So in one capacity or another, it's been it's been a variety of roles, but I think that... Um, well, tell me tell me a little bit more about that. What did you well, do? Well, um, when I first moved here, I was a teacher and loved everything about it. I taught third and fourth grade over at Kennedy. Okay. Um, just great, great experience. Um, but we decided that it, I would stay home with our kids, um, which I was did glad we did. Did you meet here in Hastings? I did. You I did. did. Oh. Yep. Our, actually, our janitor at Kennedy <laughs> kind of set us up. <laughs> he did. More information than anybody probably wants okay, or okay. needs, but... Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I'm yeah. So I decided to stay home, or we decided to have me stay home, and um, it was really tough to leave teaching. But mm. um, it was uh, I'm, I'm grateful that we that we chose to do that. It was uh, great to be home with the kids uh, all those years. But during that time, I still was able to be involved. Um, referendum committee I was involved in. I was a volunteer coordinator at uh, the kindergarten center when Tilden was a kindergarten center. Okay. Um, volunteered in my kids' classrooms. Um, so I stayed. I stayed connected, um, and most recently, uh, being on the school board for the past five years, um, right. which was an absolute challenging but great experience. Um, Tell me, now, now, I think that's interesting that you don't see a ton of uh, teachers or former teachers who choose to get on the school board. So tell me a little bit about that decision for you. Well, it, that decision came about because um, it was more of an encouragement by people that I, I knew and when the time came to run and I was like, oh, that, I just can't see that. But then, <laughs> but then the more I thought about it, the more I was, um, I thought having a teacher who's been in the mm -hmm. trenches to be on the board just made sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, everybody brings their own um, skill set to the board, thankfully. Um, and I just felt like that, that would be my, my niche. Um, and I had such, you know, I have so much respect and um, a lot of relationships within the district with, with teachers, and I think that really helped in my role as a school board member. Um, but at, at the same time, I, being on the board, I think I, I know I'll be a better employee just because mm. you understand um, the backstory of a lot of things yep. um, that I don't, I don't, I know I didn't know when I was a teacher. Um, you know what, so. that is, that's so true. And I think um, uh, I found that as well you know, as I moved out of the classroom into more of an administrative role, it didn't take very long before I was like, oh, now I understand yeah, why they did that. gives you a different that. perspective, yeah, yeah, without a yeah. doubt. Um, and I, I learned so much from the people that I worked with on the board. The board's just a great group of people. And um, Tim, I, you know, I, a lot of respect for Tim and the work that he does in our district and Kim Fry and, you know, Deanna Warner. They, you know, it's just great to see mm -hmm. the back, the mm -hmm. back side of it, because um, there's, we got a lot of great people working in our district on behalf of kids and families in our community. So, so anyway, so then I, um, I was working as school board member, and then I did some subbing at the public schools a couple of years ago, and then um, then director of St. Philip's Early Learning Center. Um, 
So how, did, how did you get? In, yeah, how did you get involved in that? Well, I my kids. Did your kids go to St. Phillips? My kids went to St. Phillips. Okay. Um, so I knew the group over there, and then um, I did a long-term sub. They had a they had a situation where they needed someone to come in um, on a short notice, and so I did that for three months, um, which is funny because I'm really not an early childhood teacher. I mean, I'm licensed one through six. Uh, so that was a great experience. Once again, a growth experience for me. Um, and then that was, and then two years later, they, uh, one of the teachers at St. Phillips called and said, you know, that Kathy was retiring the day that she announced it. So you got to get your application in. So I was grateful for that call because uh, it, it has been a great experience over there. Um, it's a great place to be, a lot of good people. Um, but what then did, what did you learn about running running an early childhood program over there? Well, you know, to me, so much of it, obviously, you have to be organized and you, you need to uh, understand the, the programming and, and such, but so much of it for me is about relationships and establish, yeah. establishing relationships with the families. And um, that was one of the things I, I absolutely loved about being over there. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, you're overseeing the whole program. So there's the budget and there's the programming and there's the staff. And so there's all those pieces of it as well. So I, I certainly have learned a lot. And then, you know, licensing regulations, that was a whole nother, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. a whole nother thing I learned, but it's yeah, been great. I think people sometimes don't realize that, that in early childhood, um, there are uh, from the state, from um, Health and Human Services, mm -hmm there are a, a lot of uh, regulations that uh, a licensed facility yes a lot has to yeah, yeah. a lot did you know yeah. that toilet paper has to have the paper around it still <laughs> 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 when it's sitting, ready, you know, that was when we learned last year when the licensor came i was like oh who knew okay so yeah there's yeah, a you lot can't just go a lot buy a of detail <laughs> yeah no and but even sitting on the back but i mean there's just so many little fine right. which which is right. obviously needed for the safety of the children exactly it's, um, it's and it all makes sense yeah. when, when you um, when you hear about yeah. the reason why, but yeah, there's a lot. There's definitely yeah, a lot. Yeah, because my leap was from, I was a secondary teacher into, um, well, I taught childbirth education and then into the early childhood world. And, okay. and uh, you know, I think people have the assumption that, well, everybody knows how to play with little kids. Yeah. You know, and there's so much more to there's it. There's so much more. And I think, uh, you know, I try to keep getting the message out to the parents that I, I worked with at St. Phillips that um, it is not just playtime any I mean playtime is a very important piece of it mm -hmm. but what we continue to learn through research about early childhood the the long lasting impacts it has um, I just you try to get that message out as much as you can the importance of getting these kids whether it's at St. Phillips or here or wherever um, we want those those young young learners to get involved um, it's really important so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that's that's um, an orientation the state has through, they call it the world's best workforce. Mm -hmm. And every um, district has a document that talks about how do we, when the kids walk out of school, they're ready to be, you know, whatever, if it, to take the next step, either to go to post-secondary or to be part of the workforce. Mm -hmm. And it starts with early childhood, yeah. you know. So um, that whole, that whole uh, series of, um, activities and classes that we have for children and their parents um, is just critical in yeah. making sure that that those kids will I know our state commissioner of education has said mm -hmm. she wants to see every kid at the same place at the starting line you know nobody mm -hmm. falling behind before they even walk in that kindergarten sure. door so yeah. yeah big challenge there but yeah I just think I'm, it, there's so much learning that takes place in those critical years that um, that yeah we really want kids taking part of it so yeah, so that's that's my background. And then and then I know a number of people encouraged you to look at the position um, here as the early learning coordinator as well. Yes, I you know honestly I had no intention of um, looking for a different position. I was very happy with where I was at. Um, so it ended up being a, a tough decision, but uh, yeah, I was encouraged and I talked to several people and. Um, and I think that helped just because I could, you know, ask questions and get my questions answered. And, you know, so I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring and see what happened. And, you know, I'll go where I'm meant to serve is kind of what the way I, the oh, way cool. I look at it. Yeah. Um, 
and so things just kept falling into place and I thought I guess this is where I'm meant to serve so mm -hmm. here I am I mm -hmm. hope it, <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope I heard it right <laughs> well and you know and I think I've told you this too and I know I've told a num number of other people what was it a pretty deep applicant pool I was very pleased okay. um, that we had uh, some uh, extremely well qualified folks and so um, you know as we went through that process um, it was great to see that and it was great to see that um, you were certainly the best choice for the oh, community. So, right. yeah, Appreciate I'm it. really excited about that. So, okay, what are you, um, what are you really looking forward to as you, as you come into the new position? Um, well, I th right now, the main thing is probably the, the challenge of it because I know it's going to, there's a learning curve, as I said. So I think um, I'm trying to look at that as an exciting thing, just um, that I'm <clears throat> developing and growing as an educator. Um, so that, that part of it um, is exciting but nerve-wracking at the same time. But <laughs> I, I continue to hear that I have so much support and what a great group of people um, are over at Tilden. So that, that definitely um, puts me at ease a little bit. But I, the challenge and then, you know, just delving into early childhood more. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I like your saying about uh, imitate and then initiate. <laughs> um, I, could, it's, I was like, that's a great saying. Um, so that, know, was a, that was a piece of advice I got when I moved into my first administrative position was somebody said, you know, you imitate, then you initiate. Yeah, it's, um, and it and I found that to be really helpful because the imitate um, helps you get grounded mm -hmm. in what was done. And then as you do that, at least for me, I would start asking questions about, well, why are you doing it that way? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. and then you realize you have to do some more research and dig into it a little bit more. Or it's really ripe to say yeah. to people, you know, I'm wondering why you do it that way. And they say to you, I don't know. That's how, we, well, <laughs> That's how we've, that, always that, we've always yeah. done it that way. Yeah. I don't know. Nobody's asked. I mean, yeah. That, yeah. And so I, I so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting past, you know, once I'm settled in and, and looking at, okay, what, you know, what exciting things can, can come to the ECFE program. Um, yeah. With our team. So, yeah. Well, and I think, you know, as a district, um, we're continuing to make a concerted commitment to uh, reaching out to every child before they come to mm -hmm. school and mm -hmm. you know in a variety of ways because parents are always going to want choices about what those early learning mm -hmm. activities um, look like for their kids and what their family needs are yep. um, and uh, as we're aligned with the school district and making sure that um, you know we are we know what happens in kindergarten mm -hmm. what the expectations are there and then that we're working in our classrooms to um, to ensure that kids will have those skills that they need Absolutely. when they yeah. when they get to school Absolutely. and um, I have seen you know we're in a great spot that the um, state has a budget surplus mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you know the governor has uh, somewhat of a orientation on um, uh, early childhood and increasing early childhood programming. So, um, I have I have heard mutterings about universal uh, four-year-old program. I have heard that too. Yeah. So, wouldn't that what, be that fun? <laughs> I mean, we'd kind of be at a yeah. spot. What are we gonna do next? Yeah, right. right. So, um, that would that would really be great. And I tell my parents that um, that I've worked with that you know, what kind even since my daughter was in kindergarten. It, it's changed dramatically, you know, I mean, the rigor and that they're there every day, all day. And I think that just um, makes it even more imperative for kids to be getting to preschool. Yeah, and yeah. Being ready to go. Right, right. So what's going to happen? Um, you're on the school board? I'm no longer. I put my resignation in. Um, okay. Actually, last night, or Wednesday night, excuse me, they voted on it and accepted it. Um, so at the next board meeting the public board meeting they will um, approve my my hiring okay um, so I had to get off the board obviously first okay. before I okay. could be hired. I, I think that would be something people would wonder can you be on the board no. and can you be and I have been asked that quite a bit have and, you? Um, no you can't I mean it's a conflict of interest obviously um, you know working for the board and then you're on the board so uh, that's true you'd be working it's not like being an independent employer <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so um, so no so I had to had to get off which was you know kind of a bittersweet thing because you know you there's a learning curve a great mm -hmm. learning curve in that job and so just when you start to feel a little settled in then um, then you're changing it up but but which is okay I mean I couldn't you know I wasn't gonna be on the board forever anyway but uh, Anyway, it's been a great experience. Uh, so now what they'll do with my, my um, rest of my term, I had three years left in my term, and they will um, 
appoint somebody. So okay. that process we went through it last year when Dan Grial left. Um, we sat down. There were several of us board members that were on the interview team. Um, we posted it, and then community members who were interested. So that could happen. So I, I believe that's how it is going to happen. Okay. So they'll they'll post it. People apply. And then sit down and interview them, and then pick someone to finish this this full year. Okay. And then in November they're going to add a special election for my oh, seat. Okay. Okay. So there there will be five seats available in November. You're kidding. No. Wow. But the mine will only be for two years because I only had two years in left okay. after that. Okay. So then it'll get back on its regular cycle of four and three. Okay. Running. Okay. You know, stag. Okay. Or staggered. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of what they're doing. So if anybody has any interest in in serving on the school board, here's your chance. <laughs> it's, it's like a triad session. <laughs> it is without <laughs> it is without the it campaigning. Is. Which yeah. to me, the campaigning was um, I just it's part of the you have to do it. But it was not something I was comfortable doing. Um, you know, you drive around town and seeing your signs everywhere. I was just like, I can't do <laughs> <laughs> Who is that woman? <laughs> you know, but so but the campaigning takes up a ton of time. So this, if you're interested in trying it, this is you know a great time to do it without having to do all the the campaigning that goes with it. Okay. Um, you just have to fill out um, an application. So okay. Yeah. So that's and, where that's and at. what would what kind of skills would you say? So if somebody's thinking about I I might want to run for the board and I have a lot of ideas of how they should run that school. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that a is that a good first step into saying I'll come to the board? In my personal opinion, no. I, I think that I think you have to come to the board um, wondering again where you, what your niche is and where you fit in and how you can help improve it. I mean I think if you come in with your own uh, uh, special agenda mm. or what you think might need to be done, it has to be done. Um, I, I think that gets a little hairy, but um, I think you got to come in and you're wanting to work and learn about the district and listening. There's a lot of listening that mm -hmm, goes on. Mm -hmm. Processing, because I think uh, you mm -hmm. can't react to a lot of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and if you do, that that can be, make a, uh, an interesting situation in, in some of the situations we've been in. But uh, I, I would say come wanting to to serve your community and your and mm. your schools. I mean, it's. Um, that's the way I would come into it. I, I, I fear the people that say, well, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to switch this and this should have been switched years ago. And I, I just think that's, um, to me, that's not really wise, but. Right. Well, and it's, it's sort of like what you and I both said, you know, so when, when I was a teacher, I spent a lot of time wondering about why they were making, you know, those decisions. Mm -hmm. And then once I was one of they, you know, mm -hmm. I, I still get together with a group of people I taught with many, many years ago. And, um, so when I told them I had this position, they told me I went to the dark side of the force. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, it it uh, it allows you to see it on a little bit larger perspective. For sure. Not only that, I, there's situations that happen that maybe community members hear about or or staff within the district that you don't you don't get all the details for a mm -hmm. variety of good reasons. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so there's there's always uh, another side to mm -hmm. a lot of stories and, mm -hmm. and um, or a lot of situations. And sometimes that doesn't get communicated for, right. because it can't. Um, right, because there are so, confidentiality yeah, issues. Yeah, yes, so exactly. I think um, so. You have a, a different perspective in that matter too, because mm -hmm. you, you do know the backstory. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I would encourage people to consider it. It's a it's a great opportunity to serve. Um, it's, it was a privilege to serve on the school board for that many years. Well, and and. We feel very honored and privileged that you're coming to be well, part of our you. community at family. So um, I'm to. just I'm just so excited, and um, I, I think that the the community, the families, are just going to really enjoy working with you and getting to know you better. And I see that that uh, we'll not only continue to do the good work we're doing, but we have a lot of great things coming down the pike for us I, too. So yes, it's exciting. Yeah. I'm grateful yeah. for the opportunity. Yeah. Well, Angie, thank, thank you for coming you. and being Thanks part of this me. today. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, that's it for this edition of Unity Through Community. Um, stay warm, Hastings. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again soon.